scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. God in the midst of his people is mighty. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh. Bless his name. It is Yahweh. It is Yahweh. Oh, may God. I stand, I stand in awe of you, oh, I stand, I stand in awe of you, oh, holy God, to the world, all praise. time everybody sing.
visit us again tonight change our lives build us by the power of your word let our lives dramatically shift tonight you are God of the heavens and the earth have Help me sing worship to you. Oh, 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 oh. The God of the heavens. a song I want you to sing that message way song who will sing that song for me Jesus you love me you know the song I'm talking about yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I want to hear that song let's just sing that song and then we'll sit down your love is mine your love is nation
you see, let, let me tell you something. Listen to me. The higher you rise in God and in life, you will see how much God does not need you. The higher you rise, you will learn that it's a privilege to be part of God's program. I am being aware every day that God can do without me. It's, it's, not, it's not a motivation, it's the truth. I now understand why David said, what is man? What is man? If you can make a donkey speak, why should man be the one speaking for you? What is man that thou art mindful of? As you begin to see the faithfulness of God in your life, you will get to a point where you will know, I didn't pray for this. This one is not fasting. This one didn't come by study. How it came, I don't understand. And you just say, Lord, let, let, let your name be glorified. Jesus, you be lifted starting is obvious because you don't have any notable results it's easy to say it is God but a time comes when men say you are the doer and you will first say I'm not the doer but later on you will be tempted to say but come to think of it is it not my power and the might of my hand that is the foolishness that can throw a man from any height it took a king and turned a king into a beast that whoever can be stupid enough to roll before God, you will never roll before men. I tell you this. That you can lose your dignity before God to say, Lord, I am nothing. Oh, it's not, you are not condemning yourself. It's a recognition. I cast my crown before 
the highest royalty. I am undone before. Help me. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. said my peace I give you there are many things in the Bible that God gave man without his request one of it is his peace he said this type of peace the world cannot give it I speak peace to every heaviness peace to every worry peace to every stress in the name of Jesus I speak peace to every storm in your life I want you to know that God is alive and God is in control. Peace to your spirit. Let every heaviness, let every depression give way. The peace of the Lord garrisons your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Sometimes we just get lost in worship. These extended moments of worship are very, very powerful because many things happen in worship i was preparing to minister a program it was a worship program and while i was meditating the lord gave me a revelation about the woman with the alabaster box and the lord told me that perfume is not the only thing you can put in an alabaster box whatever you do not want to see you can carry it and put it in that box and take it to him you can put your pain in the box you can put your worries in the box because everything presented in that box never returns to you and so it's not only your crown that you give you can put your pain you can put the worries and break it before him and say lord know what to do with it i have handed this over to you hallelujah it's a powerful thing to really be in the presence of God my prayer for us is that we continue to value his presence that we get to a point where we begin to see the relevance by every standard and from every dimension 
to see the relevance the profitability of dwelling in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord it's good to be back home let's get to the word i'm happy to be back it's been a very stressful month already and we bless the name of the lord for the privilege to take his life and his word around the nations let the name of the lord be glorified in jesus name we thank god for the remarkable things to you be all the glory in the name of jesus the lord put what i'm about to teach you in my heart since last month i was just waiting to allow the set time to just discuss it with us everyone's and again the spirit of the lord pastor shago is good to see you again god bless you thank you everyone's and again the lord would come to check our level of spiritual progress you see believers are likened to a house that is being built the bible says we all as living stones that we are being built into a spiritual house and it is the responsibility of the holy spirit to check and meticulously vet the construction to make sure not only that the house is built well but that everything that should be captured inside that house is well represented are we together so god would come every once and again to our lives and find out the areas where the testimony of jesus is not yet established and he will build us up this is why it is powerful to walk with the holy spirit if you really walk with the holy spirit your life will be complete and balanced if you see him building you in a dimension and you see that there is a lopsidedness you just be patient with him very soon he will come and pick up that side and you become an exceptional trophy very balanced very accurate One of the things about dominion, I've been looking at this and even in my external ministrations, I've been talking about it, that we need to understand the dominion systems of the kingdom. We need to understand, that, that's not what I'm talking about, but that if the saints, remember the Bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and then it says by them we reign in life it is god's desire that the church enters her glorious destiny experientially and that will only happen when dominion is established are we together now i told you that it is against the law of the spirit for a man to glorify himself so you will lift another who brings you glory you don't glorify yourself in the spirit so it is the son that brings glory to the father and then the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son but then how is the church now glorified are we together now it is in subjecting principalities and powers and the elements of this system bringing them to the obedience of christ that is how the glory of the church the bride is seen so jesus glorifies the father the church in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son then the dominion of the church within this sphere of god's kingdom is how the church is glorified are we together now so it matters to god that the church that we not only continue to learn and grow and fall down and stand up but that we sustain the intelligence and the empowerment two important things the intelligence and the empowerment to rise to a point where experientially the church of the lord jesus christ will not only advance in terms of communicating the gospel of the kingdom but that we get to a point where the dominion of the church is recognized across the sociological strata of human existence and will continue to strive 
to make this happen in the name of jesus and i've taught us you know different messages put together that there are systems for dominion please listen carefully there are many indices that you put together to measure dominion the ability to exert sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence i've taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about god and life without using force or cruelty is called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value to prioritize what you prioritize like ruth told naomi your god will be my god your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers of certain mountains to demonstrate a market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now yes nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay i'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, they are inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel interpreted daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands he was interpreting the dream of nebuchadnezzar the head of gold the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that that were representations of many kingdoms that will come and then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron a type of many systems incorporated in one and daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says i am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief cornerstone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the bible said it the king had the dream and daniel interpreted it 
and it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ so we need influence we need a lot of it one of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion I'm just giving us the foundation so when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, i can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment God's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when I talk of wealth, I'm not talking of just cars and houses. That's, 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 that's not wealth. That's just maybe a level of comfort. But that, that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be opened. Are we together now? These are the forces among others there are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body 90 percent listen please 90 percent of the pursuits of men and women on earth today is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the Lord please listen to me the Bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men 
I hope you know men are arrogant. It's what God has had to put up with us for many decades. The, the pride of men in spite of our ignorance. It's amazing how arrogant men are. And then at the end, we have to turn back and say, Lord, I need you. How many times have people ignored God in the Bible? based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with God is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the Holy Spirit is telling you there is a way I can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the Lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by Satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is God one of the things you must lose is everything God gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and Satan says continue going and then you find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with God is gone. The, 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 the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine. And to reward your giving away these valuable things, you get stipends that you call success. You call stipends the accolades of men. While they clap for you for getting A and B, you have lost the things that really matter. And after decades of moving in ignorance, you would turn back and find out you really didn't have anything. You were better off before you started following that path. Are we together now? Our world is full of very angry people. Look at the young people who are angry right now. They turn back and look at their lives. No money, no joy, no peace. You have children as if you should kill them. Are we together now? Because you don't know what to do with them. The needs are much. They bring PTA letter and you are angry. You have a church. You don't even know what to do. It's not growing. You go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it. This church must grow. And you try it and nothing happens. And you give your best and the members lash back at you. And you turn and say, God, did you design this thing? And God said, I have no hand in this. Because Jesus said, I am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it now but the challenge is this many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know we we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree are we together now so usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say look this way you are following is wrong let me tell you this i i say this with all humility i have watched people take steps and i already knew where they were going to end it's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it I have seen people take steps and make choices that I know the end of it is going to be disaster except the mercy of God intercepts somewhere in the way they are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully now this sounds like pride you see 
I've been saying this thing for many years. I didn't just start saying it. This system will never allow you to serve God. It's a promise I'm giving you. You follow this system, the world's way of doing things. You will never live a meaningful life. Have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide? Someone would just hang himself and write a letter. I hate life. I was reading um, the, the online paper just today about a woman, I think somewhere in Nigeria, who killed her husband, killed the children, and killed herself. That's the way. High blood pressure used to be sickness for old people. But now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what, <laughs> excuse me, what they are thinking about. That's life for you. And Satan continues to manipulate the system to ensure, number one, that you never have time for God. I hope you know that the number one attack of Satan is your spiritual life. Listen to me carefully. In that order, when Satan begins to launch an attack, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Ultimately, because if you can cut your ears away from the voice of God, that's the supply of your life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And if that word is cut away from you, you have started dying, even though alive. Every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life. So the Bible says we should be steadfast, immovable, are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in god to say god i'm disappointed in you i will try another strategy i i i trusted you to do a and b in my life you have come to a point where your love for god is as solid as mount zion Many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day, every time, per second, per second. Satan uses all the elements in this life. Poverty, pain, offense, disappointment. Are we together? Delay, all kinds of things. And he keeps targeting your spiritual life. And goodness, is he getting at people? Rubbishing people so much. You see everyone, I'm trying to make ends meet. Um, it's time for prayer. Prayer what? Please, God is here. Let's, let's, let's do this thing first. And we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest. There remained a Sabbath for the people of God. But until you walk with the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men can find rest in experience. Do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that God is incapacitated. No. My life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability. He doesn't bend to our standards. We must subscribe to conform to God's standard. If you are poor today, it's not a reflection of God's inability to bless. If you are not influential today, it's not a reflection of God's limitation. Are we together? If you are not anointed to a notable dimension, it's not a reflection of God's inability to reach you. There is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly. That's why we are here to learn, to be taught to be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is god speaking to someone already and so i just want to press on an issue with us that i think god would have me talk to us on tonight um so that we can have the time to serve god I title it, it's a very brief message, My Cup Runneth Over. I want to share with you the dominion systems that God has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven. I pray, pray for me that God will grant me grace to finish on time because I really want us to pray. 
I want us to spend a few minutes praying. The greatest distraction I have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread. The issue of trying to make ends meet. And the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares, especially as regards our needs. There has to be a system to address it. If not, a time will come when on Sunday churches will be empty. A time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying, look, I, I have four jobs because I'm trying to make ends meet. I, my, my child school fees has been increased to by times five and I have to make sure ends meet. God, please wait. When I make it, I can come to you. And if you disturb me, I'll come with a seed and sow it to you. Psalm 23. Lord, may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus. This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaded me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh-huh yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we are dealing with tonight. Thou preparest a table, not a sword. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here is the miracle. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. May that be our testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones i believe that the greatest attack on the body of christ will come in the area of divine supplies supplies for kingdom advance it is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity, listen carefully, to be able to spend our lives by spending our time serving the Lord. Remember the teaching that I did here on time. Certain things about time that we need to learn. That all that you have in life is time. Are we together now? That means whatever you give your time to, you have invested part of your life to. Are we together now? Yes. That our lives are time dependent and whatever you commit your time to is what you have given your life to and so Satan knowing the value of time has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the Lord. So it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack. It's a fight for time. Satan is targeting your time, not your pocket. He's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life, 
where God is not prioritized he has captured you the time of the average believer is spent worrying is spent thinking of needs here and there and I want to tell you categorically it is not the will of God you will never be able to serve the purposes of God that way as a man of God it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now that says and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern you lost appetite has that happened to someone that you sat down you are not sick or you are fine but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying you wake up in the night and you are stressed out are you not seeing that death is killing us give us psalm 112 this is god's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies he says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feared the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands verse 2 says his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright that means that the impact of that man transcends a generation the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 says wealth and riches shall be where please talk to me believers that wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of that wealth and riches his righteousness endures now this is what you cannot get with satan if you ever get wealth and riches this way your righteousness will not endure because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things that by the time you are 10 years in that voyage you have lost so many things wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of it his righteousness endures the bible says that man is blessed he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands his seed his seed there is not just his children your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve god are we together now uh, i've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom wealth riches and abundance is that number one most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective is is from a standpoint of lost so the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved it's not a heart that truly wants to honor god it's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lust but that's not the way of God number two is that there is as I will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated the economic system of the kingdom and they give the best that they can communicate and then you find out largely that from many of those teachings the members don't prosper from it it is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them but they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them there is nothing for them to return home with 
and they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God and then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked my brothers and my sisters that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children it says if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you being evil in the depravity of your heart yet you can create space for compassion to be able to look at your child and bless your child let me give you a guarantee i promise you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you listen to me you will never never be poor if you listen to me you will never be small it's a guarantee i give you in the name of the lord forgive me if i sound arrogant but it's true just pay attention to this thing don't 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 tamper with the equation when you don't have results get results first then you can say oh you are wrong i discovered another route this teaching is a symbol of god's mercy because there is a tsunami coming it has started it's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it and it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women ate their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents ate our destinies let me tell you the truth they ate our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all there are many pastors who should be in the field serving the lord they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found i will never serve satan to feed my stomach i will never serve babylon to feed my stomach it's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom i will never serve the lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space i give god I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom 
the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and God so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace on your skill on whatever it is that you represent now most believers will frown at what i'm saying that's why they are poor that's why they struggle we pray and that's very important we study the word we are faithful in church but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this quallo of hardship many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you if a president needs you you would be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president is that true yes how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way no way because ever 
present help in time of need. that when you become valuable you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable Peg at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored Pegged at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential. That you rise to a point where not gender, not geographic limitations, cultural barriers, etc. That none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you. That's value value is not that you have something that is is being biased by loyalty so i have something that only my tribes people patronize and they're only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that now they, oh you are from this state and okay let's come and buy this no when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life where regardless of what else is not important in your life people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry you are valuable it was said about Jesus all men seek for you not some not Yoruba people seeking for a Yoruba man not Igbo people seeking for an Igbo man not northern people seeking for a northern man this is largely what we call value in our world so if I have value now I just quickly go and look for my people and say I'm the son of the soil your boy has come with this if you leave me like that and so we have a crowd of people it is it's largely just ethnocultural but that God put something in your life my brothers and my sisters that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are thirsty to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what i am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the holy spirit would tell me pay attention and let me make you valuable i didn't understand the extent of what he was saying oh today i'm grateful there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances let me repeat there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances if you do not trust god to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable i give you a guarantee in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god as far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned you will live a frustrated life it's a matter of time and i'm not talking of business here or a job here <clears throat> leave all those things first you see it is your value that gives life to those things they don't give life to you many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the holy spirit in our lives is not just to help us know god it's not just to help us walk in character the holy ghost upgrades men he came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable the bible says jesus increased in wisdom listen carefully jesus increased in stature jesus increased in favor with god and with men the holy ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God no sir is God speaking to us tonight value when your world comes to you they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands 
that you are going to exchange for the reward they have you are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where god is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole i guarantee you you will not beg for bread i hope god is speaking to you you see i love you that's why i'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you 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 are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives do you know how many well-meaning believers who love god are still asking god questions still today lord this is unfair my father was a pastor my mother was a pastor i'm a preacher i love you with all my heart what is all this one that i'm seeing now 90 percent of the discussion in homes is money finance madam what are you bringing you are hiding money from me the man says you are, you are you know and all kinds of things and god is watching he's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time have you seen families doing devotion in the morning and the father stops say what, what devotion are you doing and he picks a scripture by himself just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources and devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel a lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money and you see the truth is that except god shows you the way out otherwise this thing will press you one day you will touch what you should not touch hello please talk to me don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man when you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make we are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the whether they wanted to give the person a job god is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay two hundred and fifty thousand naira before they will get the job i said so do you have the money he said no she was whether i think it was a she coming to just say if i can if god can use me i said no god doesn't use me for those kind of things god does not use me for those kinds of things now it's easy to criticize them and say you mean you love god and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat it's a cause it's not the will of god imagine for instance that i tell them to give me a bucket now and while i'm preaching i just i just say if the bucket comes close to you there's something written on the bucket just read it and do whatever it says look at how your mind everything i'm saying would just go down because i'm passing a bucket you look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say what is all this again but do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up did you hear what i said the name of jesus is not a feather you throw it's heavy it will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner and they pay money. And we, I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. 
If you don't have supplies, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, you will never walk in integrity. Life will push you to a point where you must compromise. You will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly. value now but you see the value listen carefully my brothers and my sisters just being valuable is not enough you must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization this is as simple as it is that your value must be needed listen pastor come let's assume you are selling this and i don't need it now i'm passing you have this i'm just giving an example yet i don't need it will i reward you are you valuable is your value useful to me no do i need it no so you will still suffer although you are valuable that's what is happening to many of us there is almost nobody here that i know who has not recognized something that is valuable and just because we found it we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us no sir there is a standard that demands reward because the me who is moving around me too i'm looking for something with my resources and until i find the person with that something to the standard i consider rewardable that is the only condition for releasing things it's not enough to be valuable your value must first be needed and useful second your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence excellence that relates to every level of mental development did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to any kind of level. That means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class. That level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price. Are we together now? So there are many of us who are doing things. But that what we are doing, I give you an instance. Our daddy is a prof here. Are we together now? Now if you are a graduate, they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called You can be called you can feel anointed in fact quite honestly you can be anointed but is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you because for every destiny helper there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you God can tell me or God would have put in my spirit to give pastor Alpha a car 
provided he heals my mad child are we together provided he does what not provided he prays in my house the condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house so i'm anointed i know scriptures and i come to the house and i roam around and i just pray and at the end of it they just thank me they put malt in a bottle with straw and they put donut and they escort me with it outside and i go it's not that god did not send them your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you that means when i sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me god is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today I look at my life today and I see what people do to me. And I'm almost tempted to ask, where were you? Where were you when I was sucking ginger inside a straw? And I was a believer. Are we together? When I was trekking to First Bank without money in my account by faith, hoping that I would get miracle alert. Now you are receiving it free. It's just coming. There was a price... God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match until you are lifted to the level that matches it. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called but they think it's unfair they believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact kingdom impact and the spirit of god by himself will take their minds to those people and say that's the man you should bless please believe what i'm telling you yes we've had people my brothers and my sisters i, I say this to the glory of god we've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to koinonia not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listen to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and jesus stepped in the jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why nicodemus looked for jesus even in the night he traced him the bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but i'm convinced he came with honorarium it's just my thinking it's just my simple thinking forgive me if i sound arrogant 
but there are some of you as you are seated right now there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket you are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life now i'm sorry that i'm the one saying this and i'm not by any way manipulating you but it's the truth now you are thinking how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seat to a man whereas you beg the same person why he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare are you seeing how it is there is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence as a man of god nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is important possible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of god and the privilege of god's hand god has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if I give bread to them and go to be with the Lord because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of god to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of god because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here you would hear testimonies every week that the word produce results nobody leaves what works did you hear what i'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of god is 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 is, is a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of god does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of god that's where you find the anointing so while i'm worshiping in his presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love you think i'm just wasting time singing but while i'm singing and worshiping in his presence there is an elevation in the spirit a new anointing son you have this anointing and that but you don't have this one let me introduce this in your life and i'm there just worshiping the same way you are typing the letter in your office me too I'm, I'm 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 doing all of that the same way you are reading for a promotion exam 
and all of a sudden i step out and i see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love you jesus i love i love shalabakato saladash i love your presence I love, I love, I love Listen Forget about bringing a valuable person down You don't know how needy this world is Until they find true value All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God Only God can bring that person down I'm telling you this koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been open we have seen it with our eyes the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it listen you are seated now in this place to some of you you are attending a service I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders some of you travel from far you just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say let us pray fire and you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say what is this what is going on here and everybody descends they will stop calling you brother immediately they, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit Let me tell you this it's good to know how to cook it's good to know how to do business but my brothers and my sisters be anointed this is real value be anointed have something upon you that no man can buy the same way you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth he said thou anointest my head give us that scripture you did not anoint my cup the goal is for my cup to run over but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup it takes more than a good profession to prosper it takes more than a good skill to prosper there is only so much reward you can get from that angle Ah, but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my God finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust I'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor And yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh god shorten my journey i don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come emeka you are a doctor come watch this we're going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick 
they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the holy ghost not your profession pushes you there you have a restaurant you are a chef congratulations but not being anointed you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever they will finish eating and then back in and say i don't have 10 naira i don't have 15 naira but when the anointing comes upon it the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would i have risen from zaria here how many public address structures do you have i'm not on facebook i'm not on any social media as a person it's not everything that is just good preaching it's not everything that is just mm -mm. there is an anointing that announces it's called an oil of gladness it can take men and make you above your fellows please listen the financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people i'm not i'm not i'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only sick people look for you there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men god designed it that way so when jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the spirit and then acts chapter 10 tells us how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today i i have never been to shiloh as a person and i was just sitting today and all of a sudden i got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of god are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this i said what is this now listen i'm just saying it to encourage you i don't know that man from adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you we'll consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself 
go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed I'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to God and say Lord you are the giver of all good things you don't withhold good things Lord put something upon my life place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings that will answer to the needs of nobles place an anointing upon my degree place an anointing upon my masters place an anointing upon my phd oh god place an anointing upon my profession i am a lawyer but only an educated one can you put an anointing upon my legal practice your usefulness amplified by the presence of the anointing worshipers pray lord i can see i have written songs but let an anointing come upon my song so called Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles of business. But let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. Now anointest my head with oil. Shabakatokata. My business overflows. My ministry overflows. My church overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. Favor overflows. Thou anointest my head with oil. My career explodes. Thou anointest my head with oil. Koinonia, pray. You are opening the gates of greatness. Pray. Lord, let your anointing announce me. Let your anointing announce the gift of God upon my life. Shaka takata. Come on, prayer warriors, pray. Pray like a priest. Hallelujah.
like you to mention whatever it is that you do whether it's your job whether it's your business and say lord let your anointing and your fire come upon it and let there be an explosion from the left to the right lift your voice and pray if you are in ministry pray over the work god has put in your hand lord it's time to take the power the glory of god to the nations it's time for the gates of ministry to be opened for the sake of the gospel as a businessman it's time to rob minds with the great lift me by your anointing oh god your certificate can give you a job it will take the anointing to rise to pray a serious prayer lord by the anointing on my life take away poverty and hardship lift your voice and pray if there is an anointing on my life then there is a demand for it let the anointing of my life roll away financial reproach let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply by the ministry of destiny help us that it will be a privilege for men to arise and answer to the cause of my people pray god will answer i tell you hallelujah at me look at me we're praying there is an anointing that works like perfume Isaac used it and said my son is like a field I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed that means you pass and that aura attracts you have you seen people you just like and honestly there is nothing there is no reason you just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions what are you doing in zaria i just came do you have a place to stay and you too you are wondering the smell when the woman broke the alabaster box the bible says the perfume fill the room there is there is this plant they call queen of the night that's the name i think is that true and once it's night when other plants are sleeping that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this pastor say i knew it i knew you were there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something i like you to pray the fragrance of your glory lord let it smell my life that as i walk my life becomes a walking miracle
hallelujah we are going to pray two more prayer points I'd like you to cry and say Lord I am the one who will break the cycle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of God is here I sense a strong anointing I like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray says John was anointed from the womb listen until that time they never named anybody John so they wanted to give him a name an identity like what was the status quo but when the angel came you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord and the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved listen when you do uncommon things uncommon men come to you when you do common things common men come to you you are going to pray lord anoint me for unusual things unusual dimensions unusual ministry unusual business unusual medical practice it has to be unusual no table they said that a notable miracle had happened lift your voice lord an unusual prophet an unusual apostle an unusual evangelist an unusual caterer an unusual chef come on pray an unusual IT consultant an unusual doctor an unusual professor dimensions of the workings of the spirit unusual dimensions unusual dimensions hallelujah listen let me tell you this I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me and that man said something that disturbed me I went to sow a seed to him and he said oh Lord create a problem that only him can solve I, I, I thought that was selfish when you talk of kingdom kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest but he said he may have prayed his prayer whether I believe it or not it was later as i began to grow that i understood that ah he was not being selfish he was just saying lord distinguish him put him in a level let me tell you 
Rehoboth means God has given me my space. There is your space in life. That you dig a well, they can come and close it. But there is a space in ministry. There is a space in business. You're going to pray one prayer. Lord, allocate my space and keep me there. A space that is beyond competition. Beyond contention. There are names that when you call on earth, there is no basis for comparing them. There are names when you call in ministry, in business, in family life. They are outstanding. They are in a class of their own. Your father God is in a class of his own. Cannot be compared with any other God. Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said really he said in 2012 I was in a meeting I was nobody you called me out and prophesied to me and I said I did he said yes that you prophesied to me that the wells of worship the fountain will begin to rise and that from that time his life had moved forward and while we were in the meeting, the Lord spoke to him, to him again and I told him, I said, you are going to write just one song, one that will surpass what your songs have done again. It doesn't take too many things to lift you. Just one noise by the hand of God. There was one earthquake. Bang! What did Ben Carson do to be great? Just one surgery and that was it. When you call all the music ministers in this nation, it's usually one song. Many songs they wrote, but one song. Bishop T.D. Jakes wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose, till today no other book has brought him that kind of reward. Dr. Miles Munro had written so many books, bestsellers, but when he wrote rediscovering the kingdom that one book was a game changer please can we borrow one more minute and say lord what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace let it come let it come let it come lift your voice and pray lord what is the one song lord as a man of god what is the one meeting the one meeting that will announce my grace a doctor who is the one patient that I will treat and get out of poverty forever one thing is needful one thing one thing pray koinonia there is a God that answers one encounter when he had with Jesus changed his life one encounter with Catherine Kuhlman changed his life one encounter we are still praying lord what is the one thing the one dimension who do i need to prophesy to for my life to change whose body must be healed through my hands what is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life what is that one publication that the nations will hear hallelujah praise the lord i think it was last year last year or early this year i had the privilege of flying with professor wale soinka and when i got into the aircraft he was sitting on my seat and i looked at him i was standing face to face with a nobel laureate very simple looking 
and I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, 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 you can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of honor. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing. One thing Jesus did, die on the cross and he resurrected and was enthroned as king. Where's the gentleman? He's not here. It's a chant I like. sit down and the elders of the Jews listen builded and they prospered how through the prophesyings of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo they prospered through the prophesying not through building materials they prospered they were building while he was speaking and the Bible says the secret of their prosperity was that there was the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. They said they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. God commanded it. The prophets prophesied it. The men built it and the building finished. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The Bible says they prospered not through the quality of their building materials. They prospered, not just through the quality of their leadership. The Bible says they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet. They prospered through the prophesying. They were healed through the prophesying. Their lives changed through the prophesying. These were prophets I'm sure when the prophets spoke to them, they said, okay, let's watch to see what happens. But they forgot that God confirms the words of his prophets. When I found this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. So I can prosper through prophecy. I can prosper through prophecy. Prosperity there doesn't just mean to have money. It means to excel. It means to do well. That means my life can change You've heard me say it again and again that the prophetic is powerful. When the prophetic is used accurately and within the context of its relevance, there is no limit. No limit to what it can produce. Very simple scripture tonight. They build it. So the Bible is honest to tell us they were building but that the energy, the spiritual factor responsible for that prophecy is not the dexterity of their building, but through the prophesying, not the prophecy, the prophesying, continual speaking. Not that he spoke once. They didn't just prosper through his prophecy. He's prophesying. So he said, in the name of Jesus, God bless you. And they came back again. We're building and he said, you just build while I speak. They prospered through the prophesying. I have seen what prophecy can do. 
The Bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression. The power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of Ezekiel. The Bible lets us know that Ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones. Listen carefully. The Bible says the bones were very dry. Not only very dry, the bones were not together. The fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available. The bones were there. They were out of sight, but they were still in existence, waiting for prophecy to bring them together. Are you getting what I'm saying? For as long as a prophetic word did not come, those bones remained there. And then he says, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God commands and you prophesy, he confirms. I prophesied not as I wanted, not as I chose to, but as I was commanded. And the next thing that happened was there was a sound. The Bible says that shaking and bones began to look for themselves. Bones talk of structures, structures. Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O winds, breathe upon this slain. And he prophesied again as commanded. And the Bible declares that the wind came, entered into these bodies without life, and they arose an exceeding great army. I believe with all my heart that's what God is going to do over someone's life. Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army. Something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry. Another incident, the Bible says that the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. And they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says he granted them permission. And while they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell. And one of the sons of the prophet said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. You thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? He said, no, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick and against gravity, the axe head began to float. Another time, there was hunger in the land of Samaria. The hunger was so bad that the Bible records that women were eating their children. Nigeria has not gotten to that level. I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry. I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit. But that hunger will make a mother. Imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day. Two women. Remember that was the agreement. There was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything. Imagine the hunger. That means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a, a plate of food is not up to a child's head. Yet two people ate a whole child. Is that a normal hunger? And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman. And she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. 
But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. I say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said, abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophets speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility and made to find expression on earth. It is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities. Prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very powerful. Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? Prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists. Exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists, when we find something that we think is worthy of note, we treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot, that entire estate. So we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me. Are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No, you will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him, them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. 
and then the spirit of revelation comes the angel came and told daniel he said i am come to give you understanding daniel prayed and said i'm not leaving this place lord you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do 20 and one days he was there traveling and then the angel came granted him access to revelation and he said i daniel understood by books it was not just a book like opening to read are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes so the you must not only know what god has prepared for you you must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place the bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them alienated that means that your life does not become a reflection of what god has said and the bible says it doesn't mean he lied but that something about your life and my life there is a level of understanding understanding of what not just an information the ways of god are we together now please give me this this is a bottle of water look up please everyone this is a bottle of water now it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if i open this bottle i'm going to have an enjoyable experience is that true now you have given me the bottle but there is a technology to open it if you turn this thing clockwise it will not open is that true the system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water scammed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me, come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing a small key that you can put in your pocket yet that key kept you outside as educated as you are you are still outside as rich as you are have you ever lost your atm and you stand angry as rich as you are they just made a transfer and you are hungry the atm is looking at you you are looking at it the difference between you and your breakthrough is that atm Imagine how small things cause big trouble. Small key. ATM. That's the same way one spiritual principle you should know. That may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step you may not know and stay there for 10 years. Until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed. And they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that. And, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link? That you have done what you know. The shop is already there. The goods are already there. 
but for some strange reasons the customers do not come your certificate is already there the application has been submitted but you are building with intelligence you are building but the prophecy that will make that building finish the bible did not say they started building it says the building finished this is a secret that worked in my own life this is the secret that is working in this ministry they build and they finished through the power of prophecy I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy especially the creative dimension of prophecy that you can speak over someone's life you can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken let me tell you this you know I told you something anything that is a blessing is not tangible it's not physical whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing yes we say that you were blessed but the truth is you were supported blessings are always spiritual read your bible you don't bless men with what money can buy you don't bless people with material things so i can give you money you say i bless you it's true but the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that. And he's surprised. In two months, he has opened another branch. He doesn't know what happened. Whether you know a law is there or not, once you engage it, it works. For your favor or not for your favor. I jump from here by mistake, I will fall. Gravity will not say, no, I'm aware he's joking. It's an example. No. There are no examples with laws. You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are, I will, I will come out when you, no. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think, in the U.S. He said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums you would think that okay he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that and then this man will say okay come with everything you are building my job is to keep speaking while you build and you find out the buildings always get completed when you build while a voice is speaking it must finish the same way a voice was speaking while God was building God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build we get the raw materials and then we say based on this and that and that i will build this great destiny in the name of jesus we we can be well-meaning and then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise and you can't trace based on your architecture nothing is wrong that building is supposed to finish yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom we build and prosper through the prophesyings not just through intentions it was Bishop Oyedeko who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed you know he came and he was going to run an errand for him and he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him I hope I'm right with the story and then he opened you know a compartment full of money and then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say no I don't want this and he looked at him and blessed him and he says from today God has given you the grace of on time 
that before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless. So he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen, unbelievers know this. They prepare their work together. Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was, they didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth, right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe they would induce or do something, or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out, like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata brakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying.
look at me. Words are like trays in the realm of the spirit. Come, hold this for me. No, Ejimi, don't worry. Let him do it. Hold the tray, not the water. Put it down and hold the tray. This is how words are in the realm of the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words carry things. Words are trays in the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words contain mysteries. So the word can carry a curse. The word comes to you and returns back, but the curse remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on Aaron again. Listen, words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said, it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. You are a boy. Yes, you say that is word in English, but in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I, I I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package, then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought is what stays with me. Many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking. Be blessed. That thing is not the English. It's just a word prophesied to you. It transported something spiritual. So when it enters your ears, the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit. And then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken. And then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you. And you say, Lord, when did that happen? That is why deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come. The entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand there. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes. And you don't receive it and it goes back he sent forth his word when they received the word the word he led them the word delivered them so he sent forth healing he sent forth deliverance but they were carried in a tray called words this is the mystery men receive 
That's why when you see people talk about the word, word, most people, even those who teach it, they don't even really fully understand what they're saying. They think it is speakings that gives you intelligence. No. Words convey information. They convey thoughts. But that's not the only thing they do. They are mighty systems of impartation. Words. I can be sitting here right now and yet I'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me. The minister is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word. So I can sit down and say, Lord, send me a word for my breakthrough. And God will say, that's it. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he puts that word. And you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus. Let doors be open. And you say, that's it. You did not see that that word was carrying something. You receive that word. The miracle in it will start working. You don't receive the healing. You receive the word. The healing was designed to work when the word is received. When you enter a city Jesus was teaching, find out whether there be a house of peace. When you find it there, he says, let what is on you rest there. When you don't find anybody that receives you, let your peace rest with you. Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected. These are some of the things that govern the results that we get. Look at the wonderful, that adorable lady that shared her testimony from Lagos. Words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and HIV of 24 years. When the word gets to HIV, HIV is a spirit, so it knows it's not words that it's seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and, ah, you see not this guy, this, this 33-year-old body is fooling people. This is not 33-year-old. This is the ancient of days, hidden in a 33-year-old body. But men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb. You would think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, Oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, Where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. I see it. The word is received. The power, as many as received that word, he gave them power that came with the word to become. Power to become. As many as received him, even to them that called upon his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become an apostle. Power to become a prophet. Power to become prosperous. Power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down. Power to silence the voices of darkness. Thank you. This is how fathers blessed throughout the Bible. All the sons knew that they didn't, they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep. They gave them those things, but they knew it was temporal. But the moment they received something on their head, the fathers told them bye-bye and never cared to find out, are you doing well? Because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together. Let me tell you, if someone counts, come, Sam, come, this lady. If this is a husband and wife, and you greet all of them and give them plates, huh? or you give them cup, or a set of tea, you give them gifts, not a blessing. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. They will carry those things and somebody can steal it. But when you speak over their lives, 
those words remain and start walking so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and when there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say I just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys and say what is is it that i'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the bible says god can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go now you will because you didn't feel anything that word remains this gentleman is standing here he's supposed to marry her but something on her is fighting him you are supposed to get a job the person promised heaven and said and just a signature to get that job but something on you make sure that your paper is taken away from the list this is what we came to correct tonight that by the power of prophecy that that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen someone can look at you and say man of god you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate when did you get born again and you say it's not my fault it's what is on me something on me draws the right people and you find out listen listen that's why you find out there are churches you always find the right keyboardist the right drummer they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says i want to come and fellowship with koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it listen remember you can't get to the office but there's something that can get there i'm not motivating you believe me and that word will rest on your employment letter and the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man. And because he's empowered by God's integrity, he must hear it. And he looks and says, who is this? What tribe? Ah, I, the slot is for five people from the north. Who is this Yoruba girl now? Who knows? Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother. And they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, what is this again? If you don't believe this, 
then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squalor that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished. Go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we're going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting because there is a word there and you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to declare, declare and pray. Please pray, take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life, the things that must change in your life is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. in the spirit that there are handwritings there are ordinances 
that are written upon men like a stigma, like a karagma. The mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. It's not my fault that I came from this family. Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are backed by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase curses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it would never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray. And say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams, bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross. social media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. cooperate with me 
I want us to finish very fast. And so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time. But I want you to please believe. Are we together? Words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life. Was it not because Jonah entered a boat? Innocent people on a voyage. A man carried something. Entered their boat. They lost properties. Lost. They were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me. Throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements. You must carry them and say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my body. By the spirit of might, in the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three, my God. I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now in the name of jesus everything in your life that must leave i declare right now by the power that is in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two the roadside online I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost the word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place I declare and I prophesy I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family into every destiny and I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight therefore I declare judgment judgment upon the hand of the wicked in the mighty name of jesus christ judgment upon the wicked judgment upon the wicked hallelujah the spirit i'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors listen over life if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open no matter what you do something is about to happen to you now lift your hands father i declare anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors shakatabata now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of jesus i judge that spirit one two three shout jesus spirit I challenge those forces I send the word doors open ordinances that close doors let those be open now over lives over destinies be open now outside be open inside be open in the name of Jesus is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet and I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium and I'm going to speak now when I speak those chains that I see Sakotos Katabarakatojetia you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service Lord Jesus I declare anyone being tied down by any chain I declare right now, let the fire of the sun. Shaka toka 
It could be chains that are territorial. It could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. I command a release right now. I command a release right now. A release right now. A release right now. what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so, I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it, I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi State, Kogi State you know what happens when God shows me this, that means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them, right now in the name of Jesus I declare, the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing. Right here. I decree and I prophesy. Right now in the name of Jesus, let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. for sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, and Takalakatakata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare that devil must let you go i release you now by the power of the holy ghost now be set free in the name of jesus all those in front i declare the count of three the spirits that manifested must let you go i speak as one sent from god at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 out of their lives and out of their destinies Jesus Christ. How 
many people are trusting God for jobs? You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations. Where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Seba Hasha. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you coming? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams. Dreams. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Dead people. Yes, you see dead them. people in dreams. I have seen them. This is what I'm saying. If you did not come here, I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came. You're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you. That's how they left you on the ground there. But in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit behind, why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death? I just saw like an arrow right now. Any family here, any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. Agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O God, in your power. Wrought wonders. In the name of Jesus, let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, except the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering, but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol, please join the people so that we'll make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. And as we worship in your presence there is he 
Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare 
that every delayed promise say it again that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month lift your voice and pray 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 delayed promise Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that would save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. This is not a ritual. This is not a formality. There is an anointing. There is a grace. There is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers. Paul said for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees. I bow my knees, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Visit impossible situations, O oh God of heaven. In 
the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life, let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I cast that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. Lord is showing me a medical doctor 
that an appointment is coming for, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus, from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood sucking spirit will curse you. Pray. We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos, peace in Adamawa, peace in Benue. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther, who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love. The spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers. That together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? Passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this. We are matured believers. We must have the wisdom to be able to respond. This is not about Christians. It's not truly about Muslims. It's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God. So the issue is not just about Christians, it's not just about Muslims and all of this. My perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody. When the spirits are at work, our responsibility as believers is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please... There are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray 
and speak peace. He says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. So we will continue to pray. But it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death. The Bible calls the death of a fool. Are we together now? It is wise that we are vigilant. By God's grace, whatever information we have, a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information. And if there is any cause for concern or any action, there is an intelligence system to reach everyone. Avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around. Your job is just to continue to pray. For believers that have for any reason gone to be with the Lord, it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things. When believers go to be with the Lord, let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope. While we continue speaking life, let me balance this. Because if, if God forbid, but if I die today, it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of God for the saints. So on one side, while you weep and mourn for what has happened, the word of God is bigger than any man. I'm saying this because sometimes Satan uses these things to discourage the body of Christ. Let God be true and every man, including the best of us, be a liar. So make sure you continue to stand on your convictions. Be sympathetic to people. Don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people. But maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what God has said should be. Are we together now? I speak to everyone here. The covenant of protection. You have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace that has protected us, the grace that has protected this, this ministry, may that grace speak in your life. I forbid the earth, not the sword, from receiving your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Like we prophesied, October is not done yet. Between now and 31st of October, in the name of Jesus, the balance of what must enter your hand, may the God of heaven arise and put it in your hand. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the Spirit of the Lord was convicting me that I need Jesus. Or number two, that I need to make my ways right with Jesus. I love Jesus, but I feel a need for a restoration. Please, wherever you are, we have just a minute or two for you. I'd like you to boldly leave your seat. Please, every time we make an altar call like this, give the people a chance to come. Don't intimidate them. Let there be no movings and let the people come. Wherever you are, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to Jesus, I will gladly hand over my life to him. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. God bless you for your boldness. People are coming. Outside, are you coming? Make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way. Jesus is talking to someone. This is a time when you should hearken to his voice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online. Be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time. There's no distance. God bless you. Keep coming. I see a gentleman coming. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly. Those joining, join quickly. I'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you. Always ready to give you a new beginning. The Bible says to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Look at this, my adorable children. Make sure you say, Lord Jesus, too, dear ones. Say, Lord Jesus. 
I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my savior you be my Lord you be my king I believe that Jesus died for me I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I am saved I'm a child of God amen Jesus thank you for these ones you have drawn them by your spirit let the grace that saves let the grace that keep rest upon these ones in the name of Jesus Christ they will go from glory to glory I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life in the name of Jesus from today you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen I salute you once again thank you for this very bold decision please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you